you know, one of the differences, one of the interesting differences this, this article points out, which I think is, is, is maybe not a difference anymore, one of the big differences is that um, when, uh, when people looked at America and the UK, one of the differences was that the British laborers um, always resisted change, always resisted automation, always fought it. The Luddites were very popular in Britain. And one of the things that made America unique, one of the things that made America special was the fact that Americans embraced innovation and embraced change and, 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 and cheered on the trend towards automation. And, you know, relatively speaking, I'm sure there was resistance, there was some Luddites here, but it, relative to the UK, it was a small number. And, and this, this makes me sad, right? Because that's not what you're seeing today. It's, it's what you're seeing uh, the opposite, right? Um, you know, people like Karl Marx uh, played off of this automation and played off of, of uh, what they claimed was uh, this was all going to create this um, uh, alienation. Where they, 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 they claimed that all this automation, but factory jobs as well, was going to create uh, this angst, this existential angst among people. And you see the same argument being uh, made today. So this is the, the spiritual crisis capitalism was going to create because, you know, machines are going to take your jobs and you're going to feel alienated because what are you going to do now that the machine has taken your job and you as a human being are going to feel useless and helpless and ignorant and there's nothing you can do and it was going to destroy your self-esteem. And it's fascinating because I was reading this article in Atlantic Magazine. I guess it's an article that was written uh, when was this? In December, after Donald Trump was elected and analyzing kind of the, the, the frustration of the people who voted for Donald Trump. And it's exactly the same language. It's the it's this, uh, you know, American workers have no have no source of meaning. They're, lo they're losing their jobs. They can't get self-esteem. Now, there's a complication here, which is that over the last few decades, we have demonized and, and made... Um, uh, what would you say, made it, uh, you know, unsexy and uncool to have a manual job. So everybody needs to be, you know, uh, uh, some kind of program or intellectual in order to deserve self-esteem from the work that they do. That's kind of the, the, the left is, I think, to a large extent responsible for that kind of attitude. They, they, they've, they've, you know, they, they look down on manual labor, they do down on people uh, struggling to make a living, even though they claim to be, you know, the left always claims to be uh, 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 the friend of the working class, they've actually become the enemy of the working class. That's part of what I think the Trump phenomena or the, the election of Trump represents. It represents the fact that um, Many Democrats felt that the de many Democrats felt that the Democratic Party had betrayed them. Many Democrats felt that the Democratic Party had become elitist, had, be had become a party that, that didn't understand working people, didn't respect working people, didn't care about working people. And I think that's right. I think I think, and this is the this is the whole um, attack on the elites. The attack on the elites. The elites uh, don't care about working class people who actually work for a living. And and there's a whole. There's an article in the Atlantic, the spiritual crisis of uh, modern economy that deals with all this stuff and, you know, about how, how uh, alienated people are. They're losing their jobs. Machines are taking over. And what are they going to do? And, and they can't think of what they could do. And they're unemployed or they're underemployed or they're partially employed. And they're just frustrated by the world and its machines and its Chinese and they and they, they, they no jobs in their little community, and they can't think of what else they could do, or they just don't think. And this is the big spiritual crisis. And as I was reading this, and I was thinking, oh my God, this is exactly what Marx says in the mid nineteenth century. This is exactly what kind of the existentialist said in the middle of the twentieth century. This is the same, same, same old story of capitalism creating alienation and creating people, you know, destroying self esteem and the spirituality and all this garbage. And, and yeah, it's all true if you refuse to be a human being, if you if refuse to embrace what it means to be human, if you, if you refuse to do what is necessary for a human being in order to survive. And, and um, I think we, we live in a world where it seems like what people think is necessary for a human being to survive is to complain, to bitch, and to demand entitlement.
And it used to be so then people understood that what was necessary to survive was to use their mind, to use their reason, to think, to innovate, to, to be entrepreneurial at whatever level you can do it, at whatever level you can imagine. But not to sit around and bitch and complain and moan and demand and, and have your hand out, but actually actually get off your butt and go out there and, and, uh, and find a job and, uh, and gain a skill and move to another place in the country where that skill is, is – uh, is valued and, and where you would get paid for it. There's a, you know, we have now instituted into our American psyche, and I find it hard to believe that I'm saying this about America, into our American psyche, an intellectual laziness, an entitlement, a, a demand not to have to move anywhere, not to have to retrain at all, not to have to rethink what we do in our life, and to have the same job for 50 years and be able to retire on, on nice benefits and live well forever. And this is why there's such an appeal for this universal basic income because the idea with the universal basic income is we'll guarantee you an income. So if you don't want to be ambitious, if you don't want to retrain, if you don't want to reskill, we are not going to penalize you. We're not going to penalize you for all that. You're still going to get a basic universal income. You're still going to get enough money to live well off of. And, and where does that money come from? Well, it comes from those who are ambitious, those who are innovative, those who are going to create and build something. We're going to take money from them and provide it for you because our expectations of you have now come down to the point where we don't expect you to be able to find another job. We don't expect you to be able to, to, to retrain yourself. We don't expect you to be able to entrepreneur. We don't, to be an entrepreneur. We don't expect you to innovate, to, to do anything, uh, to figure out what people want or, or, or to figure out something they don't know that they want and provide it to them. Lack of imagination, but, but also lack of expectation from human beings. The assumption is you're all lazy and stupid, right? All right. Okay, all right. So, you know, so this is not an all, uh, none of this, none of this is, is new. Not the threat of the robotics taking people's jobs, not people's response to it. Uh, not the intellectuals' response to it. If you go back to the intellectuals back then, um, you know, even even some of the industrialists themselves who who were panicking and were worried about uh, about what they were doing, and, and just like today, you've got the Elon Musk's of the world and other entrepreneurs of Silicon Valley advocating strongly for universal basic income because they're convinced that they are destroying jobs for people and uh, that what they are doing. What they're doing, well, you know, is is uh, is bad for people somehow, and that they need to adopt the universal income because otherwise people will really not have jobs. So it really is uh, nothing new under the sun when it comes to the robotics uh, discussion, to the robotics debate. It, it's the same arguments that have always been made. And, uh, you know, I strongly believe that those arguments are going to fail again. And, and, and why are they going to fail? They're going to fail because there's no limit to human needs and human wants. You know, there's no limit to human imagination. There's no limit to the kind of things we can do with our minds. There's no limit to the kind of places we can go. You know, imagine the day where we have an entire tourism industry built on going into space. Uh, and, and there could be thousands and thousands of people employed in such an industry. Um, there's no limit to progress. There's no limit to wealth. There's no limit to, to what can be produced and created. Now, the only limit that there is is my imagination. I can't imagine all the wonderful things that are going to happen. Because, I, you know, I'm, I don't have a good enough imagination for it. But it's just a limit of, of the human mind, of, of the a limit of, of imagination. Now, there, there could be a limit, and that limit could be just if we impose by force, if we restrict people's imagination, if we restrict people's use of their own reason, if we restrict people's ability to think, then yes, then, then we're going to get a, a sliding back into a dark ages. But as long as people are allowed to think, as long as people are left alone to think, and as long as people can create, can imagine, can produce, then there will be new jobs, there will be new things that we, we desire. What we need today, what I call the new intellectual, would be 
any man or woman who is willing to think. Meaning, any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect, not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair, cynicism, and impotence, and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the rule of the collectivist brutes.